from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE, covering AWS reInvent 2018. Brought to you by Amazon Web Services, Intel, and their ecosystem partners. Hello everyone, welcome back to theCUBE. We're live in Las Vegas for AWS, Amazon Web Services, reInvent 2018. It's the sixth year of theCUBE coverage, two sets wall to wall. Day two of day four, day one of our broadcast, two more days, wall-to-wall -wall coverage. I'm John Furrier, your, your host. Our next two guests are from Druva. We got Jess Fried Singh, CUBE alumni, founder and CEO, and Mike Palmer, Chief Product Officer from Druva. You guys are in the middle of it. Welcome to theCUBE. Thank Thanks you Thanks for coming on. Thank you. Good to see you guys. I want to get into it because you know, I was just had another guest on earlier, which I about the holy trinity of infrastructure has been compute, networking, and, and storage, right? Those things are not, those are evolving. Now they're coming together and they're, they're changing. You had a lot of compute here, you can do more storage there, you got networking. We're expecting to hear a lot of announcements about connectivity, but the new dynamics of the infrastructure really encapsulates why cloud's been so successful. Okay, great. Cloud's great, DevOps, microservices, check, check, check. We all love that, we believe it. But the big thing that people, I won't say be blindsided by, but aren't talking as much about is, just the impact of data. Okay, you guys were out early on it, you saw the architecture in the cloud. Are people finally getting it? The cloud and data are coming together architecturally, thinking-wise, impact the customer. You guys started attacking that problem early on. What's your vibe here at reInvent about the role of data and cloud application? Sure, I think if you look back and, and understand why cloud happened in the first place, right? So if you look at uh, Amazon itself, or AWS, uh, it's Amazon's retail APIs applied to everything IT. Where you could, you could buy and consume services on a price point across the globe uh, as APIs. Um, and now if you fast forward, as you rightly said, the compute network is all coming together, the new realm of service computing. All these trends are, are pioneering more and more increased data creation, either in the data center at the edge or in the cloud. Uh, and, and unless you, you do something more uh, holistic, sort of manage it, to protect it, to manage it, uh, it's getting harder and harder to put your arms around uh, the data growth. Uh, and cloud is a great, great answer to the whole data management or the whole creation and management of data, given that the traditional systems are not very well defined for where data is going. Data used to be in Oracle and VMware and, and SQL systems and other things else. Now it's more image, sensor, media, text, apps, which have been created. The new rhythm of data is very hard to put arms around the traditional routes of putting in the box in the middle of data. That's why the cloud is, is, is key to it. On the product side, you guys have been attacking the data. Amazon's expecting to announce here a lot, and they've done, done some pre-announcements, because the, the role of consistency. It's something that we've talked about on theCUBE in our studio and at the events. You guys have been on this from day one. Cloud operations on premises and the cloud should look the same has some consistency. Andy Jazz is going to be banging that drum tomorrow in his keynote. You guys have been part of AWS for a long time, your relationship. Are they getting that messaging from you guys? <laughs> or, I mean, Andy, oh, it's all being in a public cloud, now he's back on premise. So he's listening to the customers. I mean, Andy's, I mean, Andy's very straight up about it. He's like, hey, I'm a, I'm a big guy, I, don't, I can handle the mm -hmm. criticism. Customers want it on premise. I'd love it when it comes to the cloud, but well, that's what they want. It certainly would be flattery that they took messaging from Druva, <laughs> uh, and, and I'm not sure. No, but you guys have been. Talk about the relationship that. with Amazon first. Well, how long have you guys been working with Amazon? I think about five years now. Really good relationship with Amazon. Uh, and the product size impacted in their ecosystem. How are you guys doing relative to the, the architecture of Amazon? I think we're the only natively architected solution in the market today. You know, and so if you saw this morning, uh, we, we were right there on the board with some of the companies that have been around for decades, primarily because. Uh, if you think about the generations of data protection solutions, where you started with tape on mainframe and you moved to one of the four legacy providers in the client server space, you had another one that really popped up with VMware. Druva really owns the cloud space, and that requires, as you mentioned, a different architecture, adoption of more of an object storage model, the ability to natively store data in a file system in the cloud. Uh, that's different than what anyone has built in the past, and I think that's what yeah. the relationship with AWS is built on. So you think that Jassy's going on his on-premise message on consistently validates what you guys do? Without a doubt. You know, he's uh, gotten a lot of customers moving to AWS over the years, and some of them have some real barriers. Yeah. I think AWS is doing what they always have done well. Listen to their customers, create solutions for those customers, and in the case of Druva, 
for example, being able to be integrated in a Snowball Edge, which is unique to Druva, servicing those customers, moving data to the cloud, but allowing them local restore. Get so when AD Jassy announces AWS on-premises, which is what we're expecting to see tomorrow, uh, and maybe some sort of appliance or something along those lines, we'll see what, the, what it comes out as. That's essentially the Azure Stack model done right, from their, from their perspective. Amazon on Amazon, Amazon on-premise, you can run in the cloud. This, this sounds like a tailwind for you guys. How will that impact your business? How is Druva going to be impacted? To me, it would seem like it's just, you don't, you don't miss the beat. Sounds like it's going to be a good thing. Your thoughts? I think, yeah, I think as, uh, as Mike mentioned when he joined the company as well, right? The, the beauty of what even I didn't realize is that every time Amazon improves the platform, Druva is almost automatically benefited given we are so nearly built on them. So when Amazon announced Snowball Edge, we were a launch partner with them on third party apps to be provisioned on Snowball Edge. Uh, I have a different take on, on, on the on-premise world than what the world think of. I think, I think ultimately cloud or no cloud, it's all about helping the customer. I think what, if, if, if my understanding is correct, what Amazon is trying to do is to create a better way for customers to adapt more of public cloud, which is going deep in data center. Uh, there's, a, there's a difference between doing enough on the edge to make the way for the cloud versus trying to do the legacy of going on-premise. So as Amazon creates that corridor for adoption, Druva is naturally a, 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 a good fit for it and a part of it. Yeah, certainly that being cloud native with AWS is going to give you guys a good lift. Kind of a layup question there. Let's get into the customer latency question because this has come up, we're going to expect to hear this a lot as well. Latency matters, latency certainly is a key criteria why the on-premise strategy. I mean, I would say Snowball, they're kicking the tires. They did, I, they did the VMware RDS deal on-premises, on so this was not like a, an awakening for Amazon. They were mm -hmm. kind of going down that road, a little bit more deeper. What is the impact to customers, in you guys' opinion, of the move from Amazon? What's your thoughts? How deep in the enterprise does it go? How will this impact cloud migration? Is it going to change lift and shift to be more of a container strategy where you containerize it, then shift it? Some will not shift. What's your thoughts on uh, the impact of cloud on-premise? So, um, I think there are three kinds of clouds. One is when you're trying to build any new applications in cloud, which is where mostly Amazon comes in. Second is you can build a pre-made pre uh, SaaS application. And third is a lift and shift. You're trying to still keep it tied to the data center and, and, and putting some work within the cloud. And the third category is where latency matters. And uh, just like virtualization, the last critical app to be virtualized was uh, Exchange and SQL, right? Which was when Exchange got virtualized, the data center opened the door, right? Yeah. Uh, the last critical app left in the way for major cloud adoption is, seems like Oracle. So which is where RDS on-prem was announced, which is where latency becomes key if you have to adopt some of those uh, financial applications being built in the cloud where hyper uh, critical latency or uptime is needed. So uh, that's a last hinge for some of the large enterprises to see more cloud adoption. Mike, well, talk about the product innovations. So people that don't know Druva, they see a lot of hype out there in this market. Um, a lot of advertising, a lot of funding, venture back funding, you guys are startup. Pretty competitive. Where are you guys winning? What are the key innovations in the product that you guys have? Take a minute to explain your key value for your customers. Well, the first thing that I think we want our customers to remember is if you're moving your workloads into an Amazon environment or you're adopting cloud, we're the only natively architected solution. So just like you would have bought uh, a competitor, for example, in the VMware space, you're going to buy Druva because of its advantages to scale with Amazon in terms of its compute, to be able to allow you to tier into the various storage op options that they create almost on a yeah. quarterly basis for you. But beyond all the infrastructure basics, we are converging services that otherwise were separate silos on premises. So if you were a uh, customer of one of the legacy providers and you needed e-discovery, you bought an e-discovery product. You needed archive, you bought an archive product. You had backup, you bought a backup product. Yeah. The beauty of having a file system in the cloud is you can apply all of those operations yeah. against a single object store. So the definition's changing, we're offering that advantage. And one more point to it is also the, the, the go-to-market strategy. You saw Dave McCann this morning talked about marketplace and how it's going to reshape uh, the, the selling motion for them. Yeah. And he mentioned Drova as a, as a key uh, marketplace partner. Yeah. But also tooling or retooling the go-to-market motion of how customers want to best buy a SaaS service and not a yeah. hardware software model with impacting the real agility and time to market for businesses. Are you guys in the marketplace? Absolutely. We are. 
So what do you, what do you, what, you guys are onto something really big here, and I think it's not well understood in the industry yet. I want to just think out loud for a minute. You mentioned that if I got to buy an e-discovery siloed app, kind of that's the old way. I mean, what's, cloud's kind of a horizontally scalable fabric. Some of the best solutions aren't pure plays. So you guys are, I think, the first company of its kind that kind of is not in a category. I mean, I see how you want to be in a category. Gartner has a magic quadrant. Right. Back up and recover. Okay, you got to yeah. be in some, and you win that one. You get some good marks on that. But the cloud is more, it helps. Maybe it could be leading back up and recovery, but it's not a solution for that. It just delivers value that happens to be for back up and recovery, powered by software. That's right. So this is the cloud dynamic of having the kind of scale. This is a whole new paradigm of software development. Your reaction to that, do you agree? And can totally you agree. Um, and, and I think you hit on two very important points. You know, one is data as a platform in the cloud now is a, it's a surface that you can op, uh, ha, operate on. You can add services, you can integrate with ecosystem services. Not everything is going to come from Druva. But unlike competitors, when you are with Druva, we're going to enable you to work with those yeah. providers. I think the second one, and the one uh, personally having come from an ISV environment is this. If I have a great idea today, 65% of my customers wouldn't be in production with my idea for two and a half years. Yeah, the time. That, that model's gone. Yeah. If Amazon announces a service today, as Jess Freeth mentions, we want our customers to be taking advantage of that with their data today. Tell me about the impact of the ecosystem that you guys are seeing. Just thoughts on the industry. Jess Freeth, you've seen, been around, you've seen the movie a few times. What's coming? Because if these net new workloads, again, you're going to hear Andy Jassy talk about this on the keynote tomorrow, new net new workloads. AI is being powered, ML is being powered by compute availability. So that changes that industry. Kind yeah. of a slow, stuck in the mud for 20 years, AI. Machine learning's been around for not, not new science. No. But with compute, new magic happens. This is the dynamic. What's your, what, what's your thoughts on the ecosystem? You know, you meant those old solutions are going to die. They're going to be winners and losers. Who are the winners and who are the losers? I think the, the time will say, you know, how people take on the challenges. We believe that three core changes coming to cloud. One is serverless computing in a big way to drive the cost down of computing dramatically and also converge the whole networking storage compute in a single buying sector. Second is uh, machine learning or, or what in, in Drua we call AI of things how machine learning will be like mobility of 10 years ago, which will impact almost every single piece of software to make it smarter. Uh, machine learning first is going to be a new trend. Exactly. We'll just call that right now on theCUBE, ML first. <laughs> and then the third <laughs> um, trend is going to be around the, the, the nature of enterprise to analyze content, the, the, the whole Spark or Kafka or you know, the entire uh, availability of metadata on your fingertips to sort of mine information, the ability to data, data the platform, is going to be a predominant thing in the future. To put them together, the possibilities are limitless. You have a, a data platform, which you can mine more cost effectively through serverless, and be a lot more effective through machine yeah. learning. I think you guys are a data platform without a doubt. You're not backup and recovery, it's just one of the things that you happen to do. And you need a category to start with. I mean, this is a data platform. That's right. And you're seeing that all over the place. I just saw a presentation from the FBI, counterterrorism. They just can't put the puzzles together fast enough on these, on these investigations because the databases are everywhere. So just latency, talk about time to value. That's right. Just ridiculous. So, yep. you know, bad guys are winning. IT is going through the same thing. I think software in general has, has moved away from proprietary and more toward open standards, and so you're going to look for solutions that enable an ecosystem, that don't lock you into a container for one purpose, and we're taking a hold of that trend. All right, guys, real quick, we're going to end this segment. What's going on with Druva? Quick plug. How many people? What's on the roadmap? Where's the new innovation? Where's the disruption coming? You did that? Uh, roadmap. 600 <laughs> people and growing in the, in the company, which is an exciting place to be. Uh, Jasper mentions one of the most important things. Customers think about three things. How much does it cost me? Is it reducing my risk or is it making me more agile? And we're focused on all three. You'll see us, uh, serverless architecture is going to continue to reduce costs. Adopting yeah. Amazon storage tiers is going to help our customers reduce costs. Yeah. From a making them better point of view, you're going to see more the uh, discovery legal hold. Performance is going to improve. Integration with premises. Yeah. We got a lot going on at Drew. Lambda is so much faster than spinning up an instance. That's, That's right. Sure. That's right. Your thoughts, right. final word. I think uh, 
uh, data science and machine learning is a, is a big core focus for Druva. I think we have over 100 petabyte in management today. About, uh, as he said, about 600 employees and growing very, very rapidly. Uh, how we monetize this 100 petabyte with the cloud through us, with customers' know-how and knowledge is a, is a big focus area for us. And also the data born in the cloud, a, the focus is shifted to your point on new workloads. How do we tackle the newer workloads? Yeah. Born in the cloud, born outside the core center of data center, uh, and, and tackling those. So big focus yeah. for us going into next year. Congratulations guys. Uh, Jess Breed, I know, is the founder. It's always hard to stand up a company. You guys are, are doing well. Congratulations, you got the right architecture. You got the right product roadmap. Congratulations, looking forward to hearing more. Cloudification, new workloads, scale. This is the new buzzwords around competitive advantage and value. It's Cube, bringing you all the coverage here from reInvent. Stay with us for more after this short break. Thank you.